In this video, we'll discuss how to find where a function is concave up and concave down and its inflection points. So the example I want to look at is of a function that we looked at earlier in this section, but we did it for increasing, decreasing. It was this x to the 5 over 5 minus 8 thirds times x cubed plus 2. And now we're ready for part C of this example, which asks, on what intervals is f concave up and on what intervals is it concave down? And the key idea we stated at the end of the last video, it was that when our second derivative is positive, our function is concave up. And when the second derivative is negative, when it's less than zero, our function is concave down. So to be able to answer this, we will need to find where our second derivative is positive and where it's negative. All right, so this is going to be really similar to what we did with increasing, decreasing, except now for concavity, we will need to do a sign chart of the second derivative rather than the first derivative. So step one is we need to find the cut points. And in this context, those are going to be, we'll find where, this time we care about the second derivative, find where the second derivative equals zero or is undefined. I'll just abbreviate undefined. Okay, so let's recall our first derivative. So let's recall the first derivative of this function was x to the fourth minus 8x squared. We now need the second derivative. So if we do the second derivative, this implies the second derivative. The 4 will come down, I'll get 4x to the third. And then the 2 will come down, and I'll get minus 16x. So let's factor this uh, so we can see when is going to be equal to 0. I can take out a 4x from both terms and be left with x squared minus 4. And this whole thing is going to factor further. Let me just scooch this over. Let's see, I got 4x times and then x squared minus 4. That factors as x minus 2 times x plus 2. That's a difference of squares. So I can now see that our second derivative is equal to 0 when when x equals, so from this first term, the 4x is when x is 0. From the x minus 2, I get 2. And then from the x plus 2, we get negative 2. OK, that's when the second derivative equals 0. And the second derivative is never going to be undefined. Our second derivative is never undefined. And there's, I don't have to worry about things like there being a denominator and plugging in and making that denominator 0. So this is never undefined. OK, so we now know step 1 everywhere where the second derivative is zero and where it's undefined. Step two is we put these points, put the points where the second derivative equals zero or is undefined on a number line. Put them on a number line and make a sign chart. Make a sign chart of the second derivative because we want to know if the second derivative is positive or negative. All right, so let's go to number line. So I'm going to draw a number line and I'll put tick marks at each of these points we had up here. Those were negative 2, 0, and positive 2. And it's going to help to use the factored form. It'll be a little bit more efficient in terms of plugging stuff in. So I write each of the factors as a row. So I write 4x as a row. Let's see, we got x minus 2 as a row. Then we'll need x plus 2. All right. And then when I multiply those together, we'll get the second derivative. So I'll keep track of the second derivative. And I'll zoom it out a little bit more. And then I'll keep track of the original function and what's happening there. OK, so let's separate this out into rows and then in columns. OK, so for 4x, let's start with that. That's going to be positive when x is bigger than 0. So it's positive over here, and it's going to be negative when x is less than 0. x minus 2 will be positive to the right of 2, and it will be negative when x is smaller than 2. So negative everywhere here. And then x plus 2 will be positive when x is bigger than negative 2. So it's positive over here. And it will be negative when x is smaller than negative 2. OK, so our second derivative is these three factors being multiplied. It's the 4x times the x minus 2 times the x plus 2. So to get the sign of this whole thing, I need to multiply these three signs together. So three negatives multiplying each other gives me a negative. 
two negatives multiply to give me a positive, and then times this other positive is still positive. Okay, then three positives multiply to a positive, one negative and two positives multiply to a negative. Okay, and then based off of that theorem above, when our, when our uh, second derivative is positive, the original function is concave up. So it's gonna be concave up. Over here also it's gonna be concave up because the second derivative is positive. When the second derivative is negative, the original function is concave, concave down, concave down. So we are ready to write down those intervals. Okay, so we would say that f, our original function is concave up. It's concave up on, let's see, the interval from negative 2 to 0, union, the interval from 2 to infinity, and f is concave down, f is concave down, let's see, it was on the interval from negative infinity to negative 2, union, the interval from 0 to 2. Okay, so that's my answer for where it's concave up and where it's concave down. Let's answer the final part of this. Let's find the x values of any inflection points. So inflection points are places where the original function is continuous and the concavity changes. So looking at my sign chart here, let's track our inflection. Our inflection points, this question just wants to know their x values. So let's see, the, the, sign, the concavity changed at all of these tick marks. It changed at negative two from down to up. It changed at zero from up to down. And it changed at two from down to up. So I'm gonna write x equals a negative two, zero and two. There's one important thing I should be careful of, which is just to make sure that the original function is continuous at all of these. Because there has to be a point on the graph for these to be inflection points. Um, but if I look at the original function, this was here, this is a polynomial. That's definitely gonna be continuous everywhere. Okay, so all of those numbers, the zero, the two, and the negative two, they're definitely in the domain of this. Our function is definitely gonna be continuous at those values. Okay, so these are in our, our inflection points, sorry. Okay, and the reason why is f, our function is continuous at these, and the concavity switches or it changes. So in terms of our goals for this section, we finished goal three, finding where a function is either concave up or down and the inflection points using the second derivative.